I believe you can answer your own data analysis questions. Do you? If you do, stick around for this week's episode of Code Club. My name is Pat Schloss, and my goal is to help you to grow in confidence and to gain the skills you need to answer your own data analysis questions. Running our farm is a lot of work. Every day there's these, all these little activities that we have to do to make sure that our animals are well fed and cared for, to make sure they're healthy. Uh, we gotta make sure that uh, in our gardens, uh, things are growing and we've gotta get rid of the weeds. Uh, we've gotta mow, we've got a lot of land that we've gotta take care of, the house we have, you know, all the kids we have. Uh, it's just a lot of work day in, day out. And sometimes it's easy to lose track of kind of the long view of where we're going over the course of a year or, or se several years, right? And so on our farm, one of the things that we do is that we breed to produce our own animals that we later market for meat. Um, some people will buy in uh, their own piglets or their own lambs, feed them, and then uh, have them processed for, for meat. We use reproduction uh, to grow our own herds and flocks so that we can later have um, these animals that we raise for meat, like I said. Um, also, my kids like to raise animals for our local 4-H fair. Uh, not this summer because of the pandemic, but in other summers they raise them and show them at our local 4-H fair. And so planning ahead to make sure everyone has the animals they need is, is a serious task, right? We don't want to screw up our dates to make sure, we want to make sure everything's born when we need them to be born so that they're ready uh, at the end of July when we typically have our fair. I'm also interested in uh, growing my flock of sheep. Uh, my son is interested in growing his herd of cattle. And so we need to make sure that these animals um, are born or having babies at the right time of year. A few years ago, we had a couple of calves born in the beginning of January in a bit of a snowstorm. Everything worked out, I think, um, but it was not ideal. <laughs> um, if we'd have consulted a calendar a little bit more closely, we could have avoided some of those problems. So that is exactly what we're going to talk about on today's Code Club is how can we use functions within R using a package called Lubridate, kind of like Lubricate, but with a D instead of the C, Lubridate, uh, to help us to work with calendar functions, dates, times, uh, things like that uh, for building into our data analysis. So I could ask the question, you know, if an animal was bred today, when would I expect them to have their offspring if I know their gestation period, right? So one of these uh, gestation periods that is fairly popular among people that farm uh, is the gestation time for a pig. And so a sow will give birth to maybe 12 or so, 8 to 12 piglets, uh, but her gestation period is 3 months, 3 weeks, 3 days. Okay, uh, And so that's easy to remember, it's kind of catchy, 3 months, 3 weeks, 3 days. Um, and uh, but I don't know how many days that is, <laughs> right? Um, and if you think about it, some months have different numbers of days, right? Some months have 30 days, some have 31. Well, February has 28, but sometimes it has 29. Actually, this year it had 29 days because it was a leap year. Uh, and so depending on where you are in the calendar, you can get a different number of days for that three months, three weeks, three days, right? So we're going to work on that in R. We'll also talk about uh, that problem of breeding cattle to make sure that they're born after March 1st of the year. So if they're born after March 1st, well, when do they need to be bred? And also we like to have our lambs born th three times a year so that each ewe has three sets of lambs every two years. So we have different sets of uh, ewes in our flock that give birth at different times of the year. And so how do we set that up? So these are all things that we'll talk about in today's Code Club. So join me now as we go over to the Riffamonas website, riffamonas.org forward slash code club. Um, and here we will see the title for today's code club, Let's Do It, uh, stealing song title from uh, Ella Fitzgerald, I believe, uh, and the more modern version of something I'm a fan of I, by Joan Jett, which was in the 90s movie Tank Girl. One of the tools that I've found to be really useful are what, what's called gestation tables. And here is an example of one for pigs. And so if I had a sow that was um, um, bred today, so today being May 28th, I would look at this line that says bred May, scroll over, 
scan over to the 28th and below that I see 19 and look to the right and it says September 19, right? So if a sow was bred today, she would be farrowing, as we say, giving birth to piglets on September 19th. Now, we actually had a sow that was bred on April 7th. And so again, I would look on this line, bred April, scroll over to the seven, down to the 30, and see that she's going to farrow July 30th at the end of July. So uh, this is kind of a handy table that we have. Um, it works really well for a handful of animals or for a ha looking up a handful of dates. But sometimes we want to do things that are a little bit more complicated, a little bit more sophisticated. And certainly as you adapt to your own interests or other applications where you want to use dates and differences in dates, uh, difference in time between dates, um, there might not be a table like this. So um, what we want to do is kind of make something like this but for our own uses and our, for our own uh, types of questions. We'll get going in our studio now. And the first things that we have to do when we open up a fresh instance of our studio is uh, to, to run these Lubridate functions is to use library Lubridate. And we're also going to use features from the tidyverse package. So Lubridate is installed when you install Tidyverse, but when you library Tidyverse, it doesn't also bring in the functions from Lubridate. So we need to run both of those commands um, when we set up, when we, when we first get into R. So one of the first things to talk about is how do we represent a date? So one of the memes that people typically in Europe <laughs> like to, to push back at the United States is a global map and all the countries are color-coded according to whether or not they use the imperial system of measurement. So things like pounds and feet, right? So the only country that's lit up is the United States. Um, so we're a little bit behind the times here in the U.S. Anyway, uh, if we were to make a map like that of people that adhere to the correct standard, uh, the metric system, so to speak, for dates, nothing would be highlighted. And so that is what's called ISO 8601. This is actually a standard on the correct right way to write a date. And I can guarantee you that you're probably uh, not writing a date. And if you're out outside of science, you're definitely not probably, you're definitely not <laughs> uh, writing dates the correct way. So let me open up um, a script file here. And so uh, again, if today is May 28th, 2020, uh, we might write that in different ways. You might say, well, Pat, that's a weird way of writing it. Uh, over in Europe, perhaps people write it like this, 28 May 2020. Or you could write it numerically, 5 uh, 20 2020. Or you could write 5 2020, right? Or others might write it as 25 2020. You kind of get the drift. And if we were in January, uh, we might have different abbreviations, right? It might be like uh, Jan uh, 1, 2020, or January 1, 2020. Um, and so there's a lot of ambiguity in how we write dates, that there's a lot of, maybe not ambiguity, but inconsistency in how we express the writing of our dates. Um, these types of formats are relatively easy for a computer to figure out. Um, there are dates where it's not so easy to figure out, right? So what about February 5th, 2020, right? How would we write that numerically? Well, the convention that I grew up using would be 2-5-2020. But again, a more European system might write 5-2-2020. And I'd look at that and say, oh, May 2nd, right? And so for those... Um, dates that are earlier in the month, there's ambiguity as to which number is the month and which is the day. So unless you tell the computer which format you're using, it's confusing. So Lubridate has a series of functions for converting examples like these into actual dates, converting it to the ISO standard. Um, and I've talked a lot about this ISO standard, but I haven't actually described it yet. And so like I said, the ISO standard is quite a bit different from these formats of dates, where we might say 2020 hyphen 28 
And the, the syntax here is a four digit year, a two digit month. So like May would be zero five, October would be 10. And then a two digit day. So if it's the, the fifth of the month, it'd be zero five. Uh, the 28th of the month, like today, would be 28, okay? So year, 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 hyphen, month, month, hyphen, day, day, okay? Uh, and the nice thing about this is that all your dates will be the same number of characters. If you sort the dates alphanumerically, they'll be in chronological order, right? With these other date formats, if we sort them, they won't necessarily be in chronological order, right? Because we'd like to sort on the year, and then the month, and then the day. And so if you, if you think about it in that context, it makes a lot of sense why this ISO standard is the way it is. There's also a great XKCD uh, comic about this ISO standard. Uh, so anyway, like I said, Luberdate can take in dates and all these different functions, uh, different uh, formats using different functions and different syntax you give to those functions. I'm not gonna talk about those today. I'm gonna to talk about the date function, so how we can convert this ISO uh, standard uh, text date into a date that R knows as a date. Again, uh, look through the documentation for Luberdate to see how to convert these other formats into uh, a date format that R can understand. And so for today, we would say like today would be date, 2020, And if we look at today, we see it comes up looking like a string. But if I do today and pipe that into the glimpse function, we see that it's date and that its format is 2020-05-28. There's also a function that we could use, which is now. And so the now function gives you the date and the time that it is right now. Um, so I'm actually recording this on the 26th. Um, and so you can see that it comes up as May 26, 2020 at 7.56 p I I a.m. and 44 seconds, and I'm in Eastern Daylight Time, okay? So now is a really useful function uh, for getting that as well. All right, so let's start talking about how we can use arithmetic to modify our dates. So about a month ago on April 25th, I put my two rams in with a flock of about 25, 27 ewes. Uh, my goal is to have lambs born uh, in the fall uh, that I can then feed over the fall and into the winter uh, so that there's lamb for people that want lamb for say Christmas. And so, um, so if the, um, if I say breeding, date, um, we'll say breeding start, uh, we'll say date 2020-04-25, and then I could say, well, lambing start would be breeding start plus the gestation period for a lamb, which is 147 days. I don't want to add 147 because uh, the base functions of Luberdate assume the unit of time as a second. So instead, I'm going to give it days. So days, 147. And if I run these two lines, I see that that my lambing start will start on September 19th of 2020. Um, so, like I said, the rams are still out there. Uh, I'm going to remove them, remove them here this weekend on uh, May 30th. And so that will be breeding end plus days 147. Oh. I've got to find both variables. And so lambing end will be October 24th. So I'll go from September 19th to October 24th. Uh, I use um, ovulation cycle is about 17 or 18 days. And so in this period of time that I've had the rams out there, there have been two opportunities for those ewes to become pregnant. So if they all get got bred on this first cycle, then uh, things probably won't go out till middle of October like that. 
So again, seeing that we can use this days function to add on 147 days. There are other functions like days, including years, months, weeks, uh, hours, minutes, seconds, nanoseconds, picoseconds, milliseconds. Uh, we're not going to deal with the, the clock time issues. We're going to deal with calendar time. And so, as I mentioned, uh, there's this heuristic of three months, three weeks, three days. And if I now think about my, uh, my pigs, that we saw our sow being bred uh, on April 7th. And so if we say breed date, um, 2020-04-07, so you'll get good practice with this tutorial of learning the ISO standard. And so if we do breed date plus, I like much like we did with days 147, I can then do months three, weeks three, days three. And I see then that I would expect them to be born on July 30th. I think with that farrowing table that I had up, um, that it was right about the same time. I'm already forgetting what time I think it's, I think it was maybe July 29th, I said. Um, and so again, this is a heuristic. And because the number of days in a month varies across the calendar, uh, we might be plus or minus a couple days. Um, the actual period, gestation period, is 114 days. So we could say breed date uh, um, plus days 147. And, oh, sorry, uh, that's the number for sheep, 114 uh, is the gestation period for pigs. And that gets us to July 30th, right? Which is, I think, what we had actually by that table. And so we see that the heuristic adds an extra day uh, for this period of time. In other periods of time, it's gonna be two days longer. Sometimes it's gonna be right on. And some months it might actually be a little bit shorter than the, um, the actual gestation period. But in a pinch, if you don't have a table to look up that three months, three weeks, three days, it's sure memorable and easy to rattle off. So I already told you that the gestation time for pig is actually 114 days. But how many days is three months, three weeks, three days? Well. Because the number of months varies depending on where you are in the calendar, we need to um, give a set date that we then add our months, weeks, and days to to figure out how long that period is. And this will allow us then to do some arithmetic with more arithmetic with these dates. And so I can do breed date. plus months, three, weeks, three, days, three. And again, that gets us to July 31st. But I could also then subtract out read date. And it tells me that the time difference is 115 days. That's pretty nice. So I'm going to make this a little bit cleaner by copying down these two lines. And so the breed date is that, the due date is this, right? Breed date, due date, and if I look at my due date, again, July 31st, and I could do due date minus breed date, 115 days. So the subtraction works well. An alternative that maybe gives you a little bit more flexibility is uh, diff time. So we do diff time, due date, comma, breed date. And we see a time difference of 115 days. We could also then say units equals sex for a number of seconds. Or we could do hours. Or we could do weeks. Right? But the default is days, 115 days. Okay. And so diff time gives you a little bit more power than straight up arithmetic does, right? Straight up, if we did due date minus breed date, we get the same output for the number of days, but say I'd wanted to convert that to weeks, well, then I need to uh, use that diff time. And so I'm gonna be using diff time for the most, most of the rest of the workshop, most of the rest of this tutorial. Okay, so 
again, we could change this date to look at, say, like um, February 7th, say. And we see there that the difference is 114 days. Um, and we could also look at, uh, let's look at like April, 115 days. Um, we'll go ahead and remove that line. Uh, we, if we looked June, 116 days. If we look in August, uh, we got 116 days. And if we look in October, 116 days. So we get between 114 and 116 days. The actual gestation time of 114 days. Again, it's close, right? It's probably close enough for uh, the applications I'm interested in, at least, because I'm always going to be looking for the sow to be in labor a couple days before the due date anyway. All right. So again, we've seen how we can use these um, months, days, weeks, years, those types of functions to add time onto a calendar date. Um, let's think about a different application, which would be the, to backdate a breeding time. So say my due date um, is uh, March 1st. So the weather in Michigan is really unpredictable. Here in May, as I've already talked about, we had uh, 25 degree weather. Yesterday it was 85 degrees. Today it's supposed to be 88 degrees. Ugh, it's so hot, and but such variation, right? So <clears throat> I feel like if we can get past March 1st, then we'll be in good shape for our calves to be born. So uh, if I want things born after March 1st, then the question is, well, when should they be bred after, right? I don't want to breed before a certain date. I need to figure out what that date is. Well, very much like what we've already seen, we can use these date functions, we can use um, days, the days function, to subtract the number of days from the due date. And so a cow's gestation period is 283 days. And so if I subtract 283 days from March 1st of 21, actually, uh, because it's gonna be next March, then I see that if she's bred after May 22nd, then the calves will be born after March 1st, okay? So again, we can add days on to a date. We can also remove days, weeks, months, years from a date, okay? Hopefully you feel more comfortable or you've perhaps learned something about how to work with dates within Luberdate. There's a lot of other functions in the Luberdate package that we'll probably get into in future episodes of Code Club. For now, what I'd like you to do is go ahead and pause the video and turn to the exercises that are on the Code Club website. The link to the Code Club website for this partic particular episode is in the notes down below. So go ahead and pause this. Go, if you haven't already, to the exercises. And there are four exercises there that will have you work through various um, activities using these various functions. Hopefully you found those exercises useful for growing in familiarity and your comfort in using these various functions from Luberdate. What I'd like to do now is go through these four exercises with you to show you how I would do them. Of course, you might come up with a different way, but as long as we get the same answers, we're good to go. So the first question was, how many days were the rams in with the ewes? I guess they're still in there, but how long of a period have I given them? And so. What we described was the uh, breeding start. I have this above, but I'll write, rewrite it here. 2020-04-25. Breeding end date 2020-05-30. And then I'm going to do diff time. Breeding end comma breeding uh, start. 
and the default units here is going to be days. If I run these three lines, I see that the difference is 35 days. Alternatively, we could have done breeding end minus breeding start. 35 days, same result. Okay. For the second exercise, the question is, we want our pigs born after January 10th, so that my kids can have pigs born um, to show at our local 4-H fair at the end of July. So when should we expose the sows to the boar to make sure that we have piglets born around January 10th or after January 10th? And so we could say due date is going to be date, and we're going to do 2021, because I'm planning ahead for next year, 0110. And I want to do due date minus days 114. And so there we see September 18th. So we need to expose sows that are not bred to the boar um, just before perhaps or right around September 18th so that they're bred to give my kids piglets in early January that they can then raise for 4-H for fair. All right. After the ewes that have been exposed have their lambs, they will nurse their lambs for nine weeks. That's a period that I, I give them. <laughs> uh, most people wean, or wean at about eight weeks old. Um, I find that giving them nine weeks maybe gives uh, the ewes that were a little bit slow to have their lambs, kind of later in the period, an extra week to spend time with their lambs and to give them the nutrition they need. But generally milk production has really kind of fallen off by about, I think like five or six weeks. Anyway, um, I give them a recovery period to gain some weight before breeding them again. So again, I'm trying to breed the ewes, one ewe will be bred three times in two years. So that way then she would lamb, have lambs every eight months. So if I want her to lamb every eight months, her gestation period is 147 days and she's nursing her lambs for nine weeks. How long is this recovery period that they have to kind of regain the weight that they lost from nursing their lambs? All right. So we could say due date or let's say um, breeding date, let's say breeding start, date uh, 2020, 04, 25. Lambing start will be breeding start um, plus days 147. And then weaning will be a lambing start plus weeks nine. Okay. Oh, breeding start not found. Misspelled it. Okay. So my weaning date will be November 21st, right? So if I want to market these lambs for Christmas, they will then have another month to grow before they're marketed for as Christmas lambs. The Greek Orthodox uh, religion likes to have small lambs for Christmas. Anyway, um, so now we we're on to thinking about the next pregnancy for these ewes. So my um, lambing start two um, will be the lambing start plus eight months, so months eight. So we're gonna start lambing again uh, on May 19th, okay? So when were they bred? Well, breeding start two is gonna be lambing start minus days 147, right? So we're figuring out because we know when the lamb, first group of lambs is going to be born, eight months later, they're going to be born. Another batch is going to be born. So we then need to backdate 147 days to figure out when they're going to be bred, right? So when do I need to put rams in to um, breed those ewes so that I have lambs next May from this group? And so that breeding start two is going to be April 25th, right? So again, <laughs> um, That's not quite right. 
that right? Ah, that's not right. So I need to do lambing start two minus 147 days. And so then I can see that they need to be exposed to the ram on December 23rd. Okay. It would probably be better if I had better names for my variables here. So what is the difference then between the breeding start two and the weaning date? That's the question we have here. So we could say diff time, breeding start two, comma weaning, and we see the difference of 32 days. So the ewes that are being bred right now will lamb in September. They'll have their lambs at their side for nine weeks, and then they'll have just over a month without their lambs to recover their body conditioning and then be exposed to the rams on, um, we said December 23rd, and then they will lamb um, around May 18th or 19th, 19th of next year. So again, uh, this is really useful as a tool for planning ahead my calendar. And I can use this to plan breeding. I can also use it to think about how I'm going to feed these ewes. The other thing I can do is that this is all um, one uh, chunk of code. That's about six lines of code here. That if I'm interested in these five different dates, right, I could also add weaning uh, to, to be lambing, start to plus weeks nine, right? That I'm interested in these six dates that by changing this initial date and rerunning those lines of code, I can get updated dates for everything. So sure, the diff time between the breeding start um, and the weaning, that, that recovery period will probably be about the same every time, but the individual dates will move around the calendar as I move this initial breeding start date. And this is the type of operation that is just not easy with those gestation tables. That three months, three weeks, three days heuristic is again, really catchy. I really like that. I think that's kind of cool. Um, the 283 days for cows and 147 for sheep is maybe a little bit harder to remember and not so easy to manipulate if you're thinking about kind of the calendar in your head. So can we come up with other heuristics for cows and for sheep? And so we're going to say that the breeding day is today's date and the due date we'll say, um, let's say due date heuristic, uh, we'll say uh, breeding day of, um, Bring day plus, let's say, seven months, seven weeks, seven days. Weeks, not months. And then due date, gestation, we'll say breeding day plus days. 283, and then we can do diff time, uh, due date gestation, due date heuristic, and we see there's a difference here of 13 days, that the, the actual gestation was 13 days longer than the heuristic. So I need to change this a little bit to get it to be what I want. So let's try eight months eight weeks and we can then rerun all this and we're 18 days along the other way so that's not good um, let's try nine months so what does just nine months get us seven days so let's do nine months and nine days minus two days, okay? So what we see then is that we're within two days with a heuristic of nine months, nine days as the gestation period for a cow, right? So if on the 28th of May, I breed the cow, I go ahead nine months and that gets me to February 28th. I then add nine days and that gets me to about 
March 6th, March 7th. Okay, that works pretty well in my head. I can't take May 28th and in my head add 283 days. So that's pretty slick. So this will be uh, for cows. Let's do sheep now. And so I'm gonna copy this code because it's largely gonna be the same except for the numbers that go in there. And so instead of 283, we can use 147. And I'm gonna change my months and my days. Uh, let's, do, let's do five months and see what we get with this. And so we see it's about um, six days off that the heuristic is six days longer than the actual. So um, let's do four months and four weeks. So within four days, um, and I think that's probably about as good as we're gonna get. Um, well, if we do four months, three weeks, <laughs> two days, that gets you pretty close. Four months, three weeks, two days. I don't know if I could remember that so easily. Um, but again, if I have lambs that go in on April, um, or rams that go in with my ewes on April 25th, I add four months, that gets me to August 25th. And then I add three weeks. That's where it gets kind of hard. Um, so April, August 25th, uh, September 1st, September 15th, September 17th, right? So you can kind of do it in your head a lot, definitely a lot easier than adding 147 days. Um, I'd probably be inclined to say, well, I'll add five months and know that that's a little bit longer than it really is, right? So if I add five months to April 25th, that gets me September 25th, but I need to maybe pull back five, five days. Um, so what would that look like actually? So if we do five months, and then subtract five days, it gets you within a day, right? So add five months and take off five days. So April 25th, add five months, gets us to September 25th, pull back five days, September 20th. Pretty good. Great. So again, I hope that this has been useful, uh, getting you to think about different ways that you can use functions from the Lubridate package to work with calendars. And while your interests and your applications and your questions are going to be totally different than what I come with, up with than what I come up with, sorry. Um, hopefully, this you can think about how you would generalize these uh, approaches and these types of questions for your own research question. Thanks again for joining me for this week's episode of Code Club. Be sure that you spend time engaging in the exercises to strengthen your new skills using the functions from the Lubridate package. Even better than going through the exercises would be to take this material and apply it to questions about the world around you that are relevant to your interests. I'd love to see what you did. Please leave a comment below telling me what you did or tweet at me at Pat Schloss. If you run into a problem, that's, that's perfectly fine. Uh, that tells me and you what more we need to learn. So if you run into a problem, leave that in the comments as well and I'd be happy to come back at a, at a future Code Club to uh, help get over those issues. Please be sure to tell your friends about these Code Club episodes. You can help others to learn more about them by liking uh, this video, subscribing to the Riffamonis channel, and clicking on the bell for notifications so that you know when the next episode of Code Club is released. These Code Clubs come out every Thursday afternoon. So keep practicing, and we'll see you with the next Code Club episode.